All right, guys, here today to make you a video to share some of what I am finding with two prominent hides offered by Weaver Leather Supply. Weaver Leather Supply is a great leather company. Uh, they've got great stuff, great customer service, uh, stand-up group of guys. If you order leather from them and you are dissatisfied, you can send it back before you've touched it and cut it up, right? You can send it back and uh, they'll, uh, they'll work with you really nicely. I get my primary leather from Weaver Select. Uh, this one being the Herman Oak English Bridal Leather. This one being the Chaheen Tannery English Bridal Leather that they kind of came out with uh, a couple of years ago. So I thought today it would be a, a potentially beneficial thing for some of you. Maybe you've looked at ordering this the two English bridal leathers from Weaver Select, uh, Weaver Leather Supply, and uh, weren't sure kind of how they compare. Well, here it is, okay? So, the Weaver offering of the Herman Oak English bridal leather, okay? Uh, running $340 for a full side. In price comparison, same size of hide, okay, a full, full side. Uh, Chahin Tannery, same ounces. Okay, so the Herman Oak will be about a, say, 10 to 13 ounce. This Chahin Tannery, say, 9 to 13 ounce. Okay, $340, okay, $340, $290. Okay, $340, $290, difference of $50. Bucks. Okay, uh, what's the difference? Uh, they're both, you know, it's pretty similar. Overall, from high to high, I've had all the colors that they offer in the Herman Oak. I've had most of the colors now, I think save one, uh, of their Chahin Tannery stuff. <clears throat> I think you get a cleaner, uh, more consistent hide with the Herman Oak English Bridal. You'll encounter fewer spots where the uh, grain, where the fibers are loose and soft. You'll have a more consistent uh, feeling to it overall. You'll have uh, more of the hide that has kind of a pretty look to it. Fewer kind of mars from shipping. Uh, in general, the hide is in a little bit better condition. Both, both are very good. Okay, the Chaheen Tannery stuff, very good. I run into a few more areas on the Chaheen uh, hides that have kind of a... a a dull uh, patch, a patch where that uh, kind of just the surface consistency is a little bit uh, more altered. You can see perhaps uh, in the video, let me see if I can see the camera. You can see there's a little bit more dull sheen to the Chaheen Tannery Black versus the higher sheen on the Herman Oak. Now, the color in the Herman Oak is hard set. Like, it is it is deep, okay? It is struck through. Black from one side to the other. The, as you can see in the surface, in the cross section here, the color is not so deeply set for the Chahin Tannery stuff. And I have began to notice, so, point of consideration, when I stamp, if I need to put a stamp on a section of black from Herman Oak, okay, I can stamp it. It takes the stamp great. I can paint that stamp, get it all done up, and then one time apply a coat of a, an acrylic sealer <clears throat> like Resoline or something like that, and uh, no problems, no, you know, even taking that wet, you know, damp sponge across my product, it seals the product up, puts a nice acrylic sealing over the paint job, okay? Gives your paint a nice uh, finished look to it and helps it uh, with a little bit of durability and longevity, <clears throat> okay? No dye bleed off. If, you, if I was to do the same process, stamp it, paint it, then try and seal this Chahin Tannery, especially the black, maybe not so much with the other colors, uh, you will get, you put a damp sponge to this, and you will get some dye pulling up out of the surface of the leather and pulling that blackness kind of across your fresh, beautiful paint job. <clears throat> so definitely something to consider. 
Now, if I really wanted to stamp and paint this, then what I know I need to do is stamp it, seal it, paint it, seal it again. Okay, you'll have much less issues, much fewer issues with, uh, st with the bleed off um, if you kind of do it in that order, but not really an issue at all with, with this stuff. Okay, now the overall feeling of the hide, this hide has a little bit of kind of a dry, um, I don't want to say card, card, calling it cardboard is a little bit, uh, is not quite right. It's still, it's a very nice leather. Okay, it just has a dry feeling to it. Okay, it has a feeling of being very tough. Like this could get just absolutely beat and, and stay pretty nice. Uh, this, it just has a different feeling. It's, it's a little bit more supple. It's a little bit softer. It has a buttery, um, almost silky type feeling to it. Almost like that you would get from kind of a chrome tanned type leather. There are time when that, times when that's absolutely preferable. There are times when this texture is absolutely preferable. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, based on the application, those are some things to take into consideration. You're going to save a little bit of money. <clears throat> you might have to be more careful with a um, painting slash sealing process uh, than you would here. <clears throat> Okay, uh, let's look at the backside. So right, so right now we've been just kind of looking at the uh, flesh, uh, I'm sorry, the grain side. Okay, the side that is more visible and more exposed to uh, the end user. <clears throat> However, right, both do have a flesh side. And that is, you see a, a standout difference here. Okay, the flesh side of the Herman Oak finished very nicely, very smooth, very clean. It feels like a professionally finished product. You could, uh, if you had a strap uh, and this side was against your uniform, your clothing, uh, I think you would have no concerns. Okay, I often still run a sealant across the back just, uh, just as an extra measure, because that's how I am. But this one, okay, definitely has uh, looser fibers towards the back side not as well finished. It's not unfinished, but you run into a lot of areas where the fibers are more loose. You get more kind of the, uh, the, <laughs> the little fibers kind of coming up and showing themselves to you on that backside. You can see areas where the grain is kind of opens here. Okay. Versus again, closer up example of that polished finished side for the Herman Oak. <clears throat> okay. There's times when that's not going to matter. There's times when it will matter depending on the product you are making. Okay. Um, certainly just like on the front side where dye bleed off when you run something of moisture across it, that is prevalent on the back side as well. Again, not really seen at all with the uh, Herman Oak English Bridal. Okay, so sometimes, what depending on what you're making, the money you're going to save with the Chai Tannery is well worth it, and those <clears throat> little bit of cons aren't really going to matter. However, there are times, certainly based on the product you're making, where you might uh, absolutely want to stick with the uh, higher priced, a little bit more. Um, I think the only drawback really is the kind of a dry feel um, to it, but it still feels very good. Okay. Um, but the, the pros of the Herman Oak leather, I think, uh, in general, this will continue to be my primary go-to when making products, um, that need to be really high quality, sturdy, and easy to work with, um, in the shop. So, all right. Thanks for your time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I really need the support. Uh, it means a lot to me, and it's uh, easy for you to do. It doesn't cost anything, and uh, you'll get occasionally uh, great videos. You won't get bombarded, okay? All right, thanks.